Hey guys, um, today I want to address uh, the election, you know, post-election, now that we have President Biden. Uh, when I started this channel, it was mostly uh, in defense of the Catholic Church, because as you know, I came from evangelicalism, and I was giving my reasons why I went back to the Catholic Church for a lot of my evangelical friends to understand. And also to help a lot of my Catholic friends defend the faith, you know, I can tell you what I learned as an evangelical and what I thought about the Catholic Church. So uh, it worked out nicely. Um, I've been accused of building a clock when someone asks me for the time. <laughs> so basically, you ask me a question, and I'm going to give you more details than you want it. And if someone's busy, they're like, "Okay, just get to the point." Um, but the reason I do that is because that's how I am. I want to know all the details. I want you to build me a clock. If you're going to tell me something, I want to make sure I fully understand. So when I'm talking to you guys on video, you know, I got my phone put in the tripod on my bed. I'm talking to you just like I do every day to my friends and family. Um, what I do try and do is condense it as much as I can. I try to keep them under 10 minutes. Obviously, I don't always accomplish that goal. Uh, but by doing that, sometimes I leave out details. Sometimes I don't give the nuance uh, of what I'm saying, and I'm misunderstood. So today, I'm going to build you a clock. <laughs> I'm going to try not to go too long, but I'm going to try and give you all the details so you fully understand where I'm coming from as a blue-collar Catholic, as someone who loves the Catholic Church and loves the Lord. So... Um, after the election I got, or during the election, I got a lot of comments uh, from people who disagreed with me. Now, um, I don't always get a chance to comment back or reply back, but I promise you, I know everyone's name. I got a crazy memory. I know your names, and I pray for you guys, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. Um, there's been a lot of people that I haven't heard from in a long time. I wonder if everything's okay with them, so I pray for them. Uh, a lot of people that I hear from all the time, they make me laugh, they make me think. Even if I disagree with you, I think about what you're saying and I pray, Lord, am I wrong? Please show me. Uh, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I know that I'm not perfect, far from it. So, uh, lately I've been getting a lot of uh, accusations that I'm a, a custer, whatever that is. Uh, and uh, I don't know, just a lot of things that I think people misunderstand where I'm coming from. And uh, one viewer who uh, compliments me nicely uh, when I talk about the church, but uh, disagrees with me very strongly when I talk politics. One thing we do, di we do agree on that has nothing to do with the church is George St. Pierre is the greatest pound for pound fighter in MMA. We, but we, I think we still agree on that. Uh, but with politics, we disagree. And I'm going to read you just what he wrote because it kind of sums up what a lot of people have been saying to me in different ways. And then I'm going to address every one of these issues. And uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. So his name is Dan Bennett. And he says, are you going to address the elephant in the room, BCC? The storm was a hoax. Biden is president. Q is in hiding. On his way out the door, Trump ignored the Capitol protesters' plea for a pardon, betraying one last group of allies to keep his record intact. Come on, BCC, don't leave us hanging. So I didn't think it was an elephant in the room. I thought I addressed it, you know, in different ways, but maybe I didn't. And uh, I really didn't think people were hanging to see what I had to say, but I'm going to say what I believe. Uh, first... Uh, like I said, I might, I might have to build you a clock because I want you to understand where I'm coming from. So I've been a political nerd my whole life. And we'll, we won't go back to when I was a teenager, but we'll go back to when Clinton beat George H. Bush, the first Bush president. During that time when Ross Perot, who knew Bush personally and disliked him personally, ran, I knew he was running to split the conservative Republicans because he was a social, he wasn't a social conservative, but he was a fiscal conservative. And Bush went back on his, uh, I won't raise taxes pledge. 
So I knew that he was going to siphon votes from Bush. And I knew the Democrats were encouraging this guy to run. And if they needed to, they would have funded him. Sorry, my phone's acting up. Uh, but he was a billionaire, so they didn't need to fund him. And I kept telling my friends, if the Republicans don't finance a liberal to split the Democrat ticket, they're going to beat us. And sure enough, none of them got 50% of the vote. But Ross Perot, as a third-party candidate, siphoned 19% of the vote. He got 19% of the vote, which is crazy. And 80% uh, of those people that voted for Ross Perot said Bush would have been their second choice. So even though I knew it was sneaky how Clinton won, he won fair and square. He didn't break any laws. Then when uh, Obama beat McCain, I was disappointed. But I knew Obama was going to win because McCain had like the worst campaign managers ever. Now it turns out they're Democrats. Literally, McCain's campaign manager actually is a registered Democrat today. So one wonders, was he really giving it his all to help McCain win? I don't know. But the bottom line is I knew McCain was going to lose because the, the campaign was horrible. It's the worst campaign I've ever seen. He had so much ammunition. You know, we had the first openly... Uh, East, you know, saying he wanted Eastern Socialism, saying he loved Marxist professors. I mean, we had so much that McCain's campaign. So I wasn't surprised. When he beat Romney, I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised. And as I'm watching on election night, once these guys won Florida and Ohio, we knew it was over. Every political analyst knows you win Florida and Ohio, there's no way the other guy can win. So all the criteria I would look for to see who was going to win... Trump was clearly going to win this last election. And once he won Florida and Ohio and Iowa, I knew he was going to win. So when he didn't win, I was suspicious from the get-go. And I never guaranteed, I never gave a guarantee, oh, he's going to be president. I was never one of those guys say, I said, well, we have a lot of evidence of fraud. I mean, and there was evidence. There's 2,500 affidavits, 2,500 people swearing on an oath with possibility of going to jail, saying that they saw fraud, that they were poll workers or uh, they were in charge of the voting machines, and they had evidence. All we had to do was get a court to hear it, and we didn't get one court to hear it. It wasn't like it went to court and we lost. This is what was frustrating many of us. It never went to court. The courts would say either the state didn't have standing or you brought it too late. You know, it was all technicalities why the court wouldn't hear it. The one big case that we were counting on was Pennsylvania, because the United States Constitution says the state legislatures decide on all election laws. And they had decided that no vote counted after election day would count. Well, the governor, who was a Democrat, went to his liberal superior court and said, hey, can I change this? And they said, yeah, you can change it. Not only can you let the votes come in after election day, uh, you don't have to have signatures. So... I knew that was a remedy for fraud, whether that was their intention to commit fraud, but I knew the possibility was there because Democrat President Jimmy Carter, after uh, he was president, he went around the world to help elections be honest. And he went to all these countries and said, listen, the first thing you gotta do is get rid of mail-in ballots. That's the easiest way for fraud. Second thing you need is voter ID. Now we all know the, the Democrats never want voter ID. They want ID to get into the National Democrat Committee, but they don't want ID for some of the vote, which is ridiculous. And the only argument they have is look, everything else, it's racist. They just throw that racist. Somehow blacks aren't smart enough to get an ID, so us being whites uh, are racist to make them get an ID. That's the Democrat argument against a picture ID. You gotta have a picture ID for everything in this country but voting in some states. So we knew that was right and we knew it was unconstitutional. So when the Republican legislatures of Pennsylvania brought it to the Supreme Court, they said, well, we can't look at it before, you know, again, a technicality. But Judge Alito said, put the votes aside that come on after it. If they make a difference, we'll hear it. Well, they didn't hear it. So that is what disappointed us again. So these were the things that, in our opinion, guys like me believe the election was illegitimate. Biden won by fraud. And there are many other. You know, those 2,500 affidavits have some pretty strong evidence. And I'm not going to go through it. I've, I said it in many other videos. 
but there's a lot of evidence. But Biden won, maybe by a technicality, but he won. President Biden is the president. Then I had made a video that I speculated what some people were saying. Like, you know, people I respected, attorney Rudy Giuliani, by any measure was the greatest U.S. attorney. He busted more, more politicians and more mafia guys than any U.S. attorney. Giuliani was a great attorney, a great prosecutor. And then he was a great mayor. He turned New York City around. So Giuliani was no weirdo, no clown. And he was saying we have enough evidence. We have enough evidence that if the president wanted to, under this um, uh, executive order he signed in 2018, that if we could prove foreign interference, that he could stop he could stop things and force the courts to look at the evidence. You know, he could take, you know, it wasn't martial law, but that's what people were saying. Oh, he could have martial law, blah, blah, blah. That wasn't what I was saying. But when I said that in my video, will Trump cross the Rubicon? Uh, I said, you know, a lot of people would get arrested. Special forces would have to come in and use uh, police powers. I said, it's a very long shot. I don't think that's going to happen. But this is a speculation. This is our last hope. Will he cross the Rubicon? And he didn't cross the Rubicon. And President Biden is president. So I don't see how that makes me a conspiracy theory. And speaking of conspiracy theories, I've always laughed at conspiracy theories. I had a friend. And it's funny. I mean, I don't want to insult people that believe him because I have a friend. He's an MBA, much more educated than me. He's a president of a bank. He's a very smart guy. And years ago, he, he came out with this conspiracy theory about Pizzagate. And I looked into it and I was like, oh, this is that QAnon conspiracy group. I said, bro, I said, I said, I, I don't think this is true. I said, the way I see these conspiracy theories, they'll take like something that is true. So you're like, oh, see, they were right about this. And then add a bunch of other stuff that they uh, want you to believe. And I said, honestly, I think this is a Democrat that wants to make Republicans fall into this so we look stupid. I said, I think they're feeding all these. So when we do see a real conspiracy, like the fraud of a major election, like just happened, we look like lunatics because we fell for all these other fake things. And other people are like, oh, that's just another QAnon. That's just another QAnon conspiracy. So I think there's a lot of ridiculous conspiracy theories out there that people fall for. And it's designed by the Democrats so Republicans either don't believe it anymore when there's something a real conspiracy not just a theory um so that's that's what i think of conspiracy theories um and then you know something else happened during this election i see a lot of people tell me oh, all the christian prophets you know all the christian prophets are saying trump's gonna win and i'm very skeptical i never said that and i never you know i just i was like i hope they're right uh, very skeptical of that. Now, do I believe in prophecy? Yes. You know, I was a charismatic Pentecostal uh, Protestant for years. I've seen prophecy in action. You know, St. Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14 tells us to desire the gifts, especially prophecy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. So I received the gift of tongues at a young age, and, you know, in that same... Chapter 14, St. Paul 14, 15 says, you know, pray with your spirit, pray with your mind, sing with your spirit, sing with your mind. I'm far from a perfect Christian. I, I missed the mark on many things, but this one I've been able to do for some reason. I think because I don't have to do anything. It's the grace of God. You know, I speak in tongues like someone who grew up speaking English and Spanish. They don't think about it. I pray in tongues and I sing in tongues as much as I pray in my, with my mind and sing with my mind. But in church... If there's not an interpreter, according to St. Paul, pray to yourself. So I've never felt led to speak in tongues out loud that there would be an interpreter. I figured I would do it and people would look at me like I had three heads. So I pray to myself. The only person that hears me is God. And if I get too loud, maybe my wife sitting next to me. Uh, but I've been in churches where people had the gift of interpretation and other people spoke out loud in tongues and people have interpreted it. And I've been in churches where there were prophecies. But I've never heard a prophecy for telling the future. Prophecy is just a spoken word from God. It's not always for telling the future. And I've always heard encouraging words, and specifically to certain people. Like my, my sister, thank God, is clean, 
But for many years, she was a heroin addict. And I brought her to an Assemblies of God church. And a man came up with a prophecy, and I knew it was speaking to her. It was specifically saying things to her, but encouraging her that God loved her and God was going to free her. And he did. That prophecy came true. And then someone spoke in tongues and someone interpreted it. And again, it was for her. And then someone else spoke in prophecy. Three. The Bible says never go more than three. And there was three. And it was all directed at her. And the Bible said, if, if it's from God, that sinner will repent. And I looked down at my sister, and she was on her knees crying and repenting. So prophecy is real, the gifts are real, but we have to be careful. The Bible tells us not everyone who claims to be a prophet is a prophet, and it's a very easy test. It's a very easy test, and I'm going to give you the test to find out if someone's a, a prophet of God or a false prophet. It's not like you can be right sometimes or wrong sometimes. Either you're a prophet or you're not. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 21 to 22, it says this, You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? So basically, the guy's a false prophet. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message that the Lord has not spoken. So, it's very easy. If someone says they're a prophet and they speak something that's going to happen and it doesn't happen, they're a false prophet. You don't get a second chance. You don't say, oh, I missed that one, but I got this one right. No, that's not how it works. And in all my life of being a Christian, I've only heard one like public prophecy that actually was specific and came true, and that's from the late Protestant uh, uh, evangelist called Kim Clement. A friend of mine had sent me the video, and I was like, wow. He specifically named Trump years before Trump ever ran, and he specifically said what the media was going to say about him, and, and, and a few other things. I mean, this guy nailed it. Uh, so when I heard there were prophets saying that he was going to win, I was like, okay, I'm not going to judge. You know, I'm going to let the Word of God judge. If what he says come true, he may be a prophet of God, but if it's not, then it's a false prophecy. But I don't think these are bad men that are trying to mislead people. I think at the end of that verse, it says, that prophet has spoken preemptuously, so do not be alarmed. So in other words, he assumed, he was so excited. He thought, he listened to other people saying it, and he didn't hear God. It was himself saying it. But he was wrong, so he was a false prophet. I'm not saying he was a bad guy, he just was, he was wrong. It says it right there. So I would be careful when people say it's guaranteed, it's a short thing. Um, and maybe I got a little overzealous. Like I said, you know, I, I wasn't surprised when Clinton won. I wasn't surprised when Obama. In fact, you know, my friends that were liberals, I congratulated them. And I just wound up with my life, you know. And um, some of my family was like, you acted different in this election than you normally do. You normally, you know, just lick your wounds and go on. You seem like, and I did act different because I do believe there was fraud. And I do believe that they cheated. But we lost. They were good at cheating. We just got to get better at stopping them from cheating. It's like, you know, when I played football, you know, we played in Newark and in some rough towns where these guys would play dirty. And, um, you know, my coach would say, don't play dirty, just hit harder. And you just got to hit them harder next time. You know, I'm saying, you know, in football you hit harder and politically you hit harder through strategies, not violence. And getting to the violence that this gentleman talked about, how he turned his back. These people that did that riot were wrong. They were stupid. Um, this, and I made a video one day when Republicans act like Democrats because the Democrat supporters of Biden, Antifa and Black Lives Matter have been attacking federal buildings for six months, putting them on fire. And uh, they've been rioting and looting and the media has been ignoring it. And in fact, the Democrats have been encouraging it. Kamala Harris had a fund to bail out these rioters and looters. So don't tell me that uh, Trump incited an insurrection. Trump told these guys, I seen the tweet, and then Twitter banned that tweet so people didn't see his tweet. But I seen it before Twitter banned him, and it said, obey the police, do not riot, we are, we are the party of law and order, I'm sending the National Guard. And they said, well, in his speech, he rallied people up. He's had over 700 rallies, maybe between both elections, over 1,000 rallies with thousands of people. Never once was there a riot. And he talks the same way. I heard him say, now we'll walk over to the Capitol and peacefully 
and patriotically protest. What those guys did was not peacefully and was not patriotic. They acted like the Democrats that were burning down police stations, burning down federal buildings, shooting cops, and causing violence. That was wrong, and, and there, I'm sure there was Republicans in there that thought they were doing right. They did wrong. That was wrong. And of course Trump's not going to pardon them. He condemned them. So I don't know why you think Trump would pardon them. And um, as far as, uh, I lost my train of thought, but as far as um, these riots on these federal buildings, if you remember, when Trump sent in the marshals to protect federal courthouses, Nancy Pelosi called those guys Gestapo, Nazis. So I think Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris are more culpable for insurrection in the past six months than Trump is. So that's how I feel about that. President Biden is our president. He won. And like I said, we just got to get better at stopping cheating. We got we to gotta really stand our ground. There has to be voter ID and we got to get into this freaking mail-in ballot voting. And, and uh, we got to get judges to uphold the law. You know, that's, that's what we need. But at the end of the day, the Democrat leaders that have a Marxist agenda that want to slaughter unborn children, they're my enemy. But Democrats that don't uh, think that their agenda is that evil and Democrat people like Dan Bennett, you just, you're my friend, you're my brother, and we disagree. We're not enemies, we're opponents. And I'm gonna keep trying to convince you that the Democrat Party is evil, just like the UCBC just said about their agenda is evil. Maybe, maybe I should say their agenda is evil, just like the United States bishops said their agenda is evil. Biden's agenda is evil. They want to slaughter millions of babies. Uh, and they want to bring in a Marxist society. So, you know, I don't think they're going to get it. You know, and, a lot of, and that's another conspiracy that this Great Reset is going to cause a one world government and... You know, we're going to be slaves like Marxists, but I don't think that's true. The reset is true. You can Google reset. You know, the economic forum is talking about the great reset. And you actually, you can see on a Zoom call that one of the communist Chinese leaders is quoting Biden and says, yeah, we're going to build back better with the great reset. And there's a lot of, you know, communists that want America being part of this great reset. So we're all equal financially, of course. They want us to be a part of that. And Biden and a lot of Democrats want to be part of that. But the American people ain't going to stand for it. You know, half the people who voted for Trump, we're not going to stand for that. And, uh, you know, you see in other countries like, the, you know, they want the U Europe involved in this great reset. But we just had Brexit. Italy's talking about quiddly. They see how, you know, a big central government is, is a total failure. So the European Union is breaking apart. So I see a lot of hope that this Great Reset is going to fail, and I'm going to pray that the Great Reset fail, and I'm going to pray that Biden fails, not as a human being, but as a leader trying to advance his Marxist agenda. I'm going to pray that he repents and gets a more sensible agenda, a more American, pro-American agenda, pro-life agenda. But if he doesn't repent, my prayer is that he fails. And the Republicans take over in two years, you know, in the House. And, and we could take over the Senate, too, in two years. We could take them both back. And that's my prayer. But honestly, I don't lose sleep over this. And I don't get angry. And Dan, I still consider you a brother. And I appreciate, you know, the challenges you give me. I don't get angry at you. And, uh, and you're always very respectful. Like most of, most of my um, viewers that disagree with me are always respectful. So I'm guessing they're all Catholic. <laughs> Uh, and they're uh, just they're being respectful. So again, um, I hope you understand what I meant. I hope this clock I built wasn't too big. But uh, the most important thing is that Jesus Christ is still King of Kings. And if you're Catholic, you still belong to the church that Jesus established. And even if I disagree with my Catholic brother on politics, we have something special when we eat the body and drink the precious blood of Jesus Christ, we become one. And I'm one in spirit with my Protestant brothers because we have the same Holy Spirit, but we're one in a deeper way when we have the Eucharist. So just remember that, and let's love each other. They'll know we are Christians for our love for one another. So if I offended anybody, I apologize. 
if I came across that I was hating, I asked for forgiveness. But I do believe President Trump was the best president in my lifetime, and he was the best president for the Catholic Church and for Protestant Christians and all religions. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye. I've gone pretty long. God bless. Stay Catholic.